This is Carl at Dash RV Detroit. I'm going to walk through this 22 uh, Puma travel trailer, model number 28 DBFQ. Okay, so this is not a floor plan video, it's a how to. So I'm uh, going to show you some of the features, okay? So you have power tongue jack, or excuse me. <laughs> Power stabilizer jacks. Um, one switch controls both rear and another switch controls both front. Uh, they are manually crankable. If you get into an emergency, you can crank them from this side right here. You see that shaft with a pin through it. Okay. Now, you have the same setup up front. Uh, one switch controls both. So, oh, let me see what we got here. Okay, I just wanted to look around for a second here. Okay, so, um, you have a rear entry door here, which is a rear bathroom. Uh, power awning with LED strip. Of course, this is a, uh, a port for a sprayer, right? You get a sprayer with this, coiled sprayer. And uh, this is your black tank flush. So uh, after you dump your black tank, the valves are on the other side. After you dump it, you come around here with the hose of the dump station, screw it on there and turn it on. Make sure, like it says on this sticker, you have the, the valve, the black tank flush valve open before you turn it on, okay? Before you turn on the water. Okay, this is a quick connect here for your LP system. See it right there? That's used for this right here. Let's see if I can get this door up there with one hand here. Okay, so this is for your griddle system here. Right? Um, you have this quick connect hose right here. You got a female that goes on the connects to the back of the griddle. And then this male side comes down and plugs in right to this quick, quick connect here. Okay, you also have a, a um, refrigerator out here. Let's see if there's any stuff in there. No. Okay. Okay, so moving down further, you, we have a, a range hood vent. It's got a baffle in it. Right now it's open. So we just remember when you're venting to the outside from the, from the range hood, uh, you always want that baffle in there flapping freely so it vents to the outside, otherwise you can just snap it shut. <coughs> Excuse me. Power and TV signal out, plus a, a bracket to hang a TV. This is your fresh water tank fill right here. So if you want to, uh, let me put this on here. Hold on, please. I don't know who did that, but okay. Set that down. Okay, so you, you can... Uh, the most common way to get water to the trailer obviously is the, obviously is the, um, the city water hookup, right? But if you don't have city water, uh, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. So I'll show you how the pump works and wh where the switch is at when we get inside. Let me just set this out of the way for a second. It's windy. Okay. Now, this is your water heater here. This works on both gas and electric. Okay. So, keep in mind that uh, right now this, is, this water heater is full, as in it has water in the water heater tank, and it's in the uh, camping mode, meaning the valves on the back are in the correct position. Whenever you're winterizing, dewinterizing, make sure you, you know what position to put the valves in when you're, when you're, when you're winterizing and dewinterizing. That's important. Right now this is in summer camping mode, so it's all set and ready to go. Never run the water heater without water in the tank ever. Um, so this, this switch here, this rocker switch, this controls the electric heating element. That's behind that cover there. Then you have your burner here, your gas burner. There's a switch inside for that. That controls the, uh, the uh, gas burner. So basically you're gonna run it when you're at the campground, you'll have the uh, electric element turned on. So it just keeps your water hot. But when you're showering, for example, 
you could flip on the gas burner which gives you more hot water it's not it's not on demand but it's 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 much faster recovery than it would be with just the electric heating element okay okay um let's move down here there's your your front uh stabilizer switch this is the quick connect here or i'm sorry the quick connect spray hose right here with along with the sprayer head uh, you have a, you, a hitch with this one so you've got a husky center line weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control which is a nice one and i'll show you how that operates or somebody will show you how that operates when you pick up this is just a hookup for a if you wanted to purchase a, purchase a go power solar panel kit you could plug it right in there just a portable solar panel you use to charge the battery that sort of thing it's just an option okay two lp tanks um here we have uh your power tongue jack it has a hitch light plus uh, up and down if it ever fails you can pull this rubber plug out of the top and you can use a three-quarter inch socket or crank and you can crank this manually up and down in an emergency so keep that in mind also uh, your deep cycle marine battery this is the kill switch for the battery so you can turn it on and off okay let's see what else we have here this is your dump hose right here that comes with the trailer all right some storage here this is your uh, power cord it's a 50 amp cord because it's a 50 amp system we also give you this reducer here to reduce it down to a 30 and then we give you a smaller one to take it down to a 20 you obviously can't run the air conditioner off a 20 but you can always plug it in for packing or in an emergency something like that okay uh, um, outside shower just a just a sprayer for kids and dogs and feet or whatever you're hosing down this is your city water connection right here this is the most common way to get water to the trailer um, your valves are here two gray valves and a black valve the black valve is obviously toilet water and waste the gray ones are sink and shower water um, remember when you're gonna flush your black tank make sure you open the they have the valve of the black tank valve open before you turn on the water more storage here just to be clean still okay uh, you have a, a ladder which makes accessing the roof real easy so um, that's good because you the manufacturer states you should inspect the roof every 60 days or so so you want to have somebody go up there take a look around make sure there's no damage by to the roofing material or roofing attachments no damage by low branches or road debris you want to make sure all the, the sealant looks like it's in good shape no cracking or separation where water can get through just give it a quick inspection to to take to protect your investment make sure you you're on you understand and are aware of any issues you're having with it so that should be part of your regular maintenance okay so this is just cable campground cable and sail light through that's where your your short cord plugs into obviously that's housing here tells us is pre-wired for a backup camera it's a furion kit if you're interested you can get one of those okay so let's go inside and see what's happening now the first thing to know um, when you're using your awning your power awning if you see if you open the door all the way and you try to put the awning out it's going to hit the arm after you got it out it's no problem so you want this thing perpendicular when you're when you're opening and closing the awning okay that's important anytime you're using anything you hear any kind of unusual noise just stop what you're doing and look and see what's happening okay this is uh this is your control panel so you have your slide room switch here your power awning switch here uh, here we can show you a little bit here like so never leave the awning out unattended if you're not at the campground roll it in uh, to turn your water pump on so we talked about the water pump to pump water out of the fresh water tank if you don't have city water you do that right there that's also used to winterize the trailer to turn your water heater on gas remember I showed you the to turn on the electric heating element there's that switch in the lower left hand corner to turn it on on gas uh, you do it right here because there are lights here and then you have your 
your tanks, your batteries charged. Fresh water tank, black, gray one and gray two, two, three you, don't, three you disregard. There's no black tank three in this one. Okay. Keys are right here on this faucet. Okay. Let's come on in and see what else we have here. So your microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood vent here. Uh, it's got the fan. You can hear it revving up there. It has a light. Um, like I said, when you're using the fan, you want that baffle on the outside open. Uh, your, your range works like most of them do. It has, uh, right here you have three knobs for the three burners. This knob on the left is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark it. And then this is the oven knob. So if he's got the gas turned on, which it looks like he doesn't, of course. Oh, brother. I don't understand why he preps it to go and he shuts the gas off. But, nevertheless. I'm going to get these turned on here. Okay, so now they're on. So anytime you shut them off or on or remove the tanks to fill them or whatever, keep in mind that when you uh, when you uh, turn them, when you you, you go to light the, uh, the oven some or the uh, sorry the burner, sometimes it'll take a few sparks depending on how much air got in the line. This one should be okay here. So we're just going to go like this. Yep, we're going to have to work it up. So we'll open a couple and let them go. There they go. Once you can see they're flickering a bit. Once they, once they're, they're solid gas in the line and all the air is gone, it'll just take a quick flick to start them up. So you're just gonna go like this, like so. Okay. So three burners and three knobs. And this thing that's annoying me there. Okay. Uh, your oven. There's a pilot light all the way at the back in the bottom. Um, you can see it's sparking back there, right? So. You go to the oven knob, you go to the picture of the flame, which means pilot light. You depress it, you keep it depressed while you're lighting it. You spark it with the other hand until you see the pilot light back there light. Once it lights, you still hold this for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to whatever temperature you want. When you shut it off, the pilot light goes out also. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay, this, let me get that out of there. This is a, uh, this cooked, or this, this, Glass top, you always keep it shut when you're traveling. This, I believe, is for the refrigerator. This one probably has a, let me make sure before I say that. No, I guess I'm wrong. Okay, so, I did not prep this, so let me look around. Oh, okay, this is, this is the counter light here, okay. All right, so you, that's the counter light switch. There's also another light here. Okay, down here, this device here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green like it is. If not, get it serviced, okay? So, uh, basically if it goes off, it's detected carbon monoxide or LP gas. So, you, you shut all the appliances off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, and figure out what's going on, all right? If it beeps very slowly, the same tone, but very slowly, is telling you that your battery's low. So it does three different things, it carbon monoxide, LP gas, and low battery. There's a tester, I'll let you hear it. Uh, LP's good, carbon monoxide coming up. Good, and then low battery line. Okay, and back to green. It should always be green, if not get it serviced. Now this is your power converter here. This converts AC to DC power. So as long as you're plugged into the shore power, um, uh, it will have 110 AC at the circuit breakers here and they're all labeled these are just like you'd see at home and they're all labeled then the power is converted to 12 volt DC up here you see you got 12 volt fuses and a couple in a breaker uh, so that's where the 12 volt comes from this is also a battery tender so it'll sense how much energy your battery needs and it'll always keep as long as you're plugged in it's always going to keep your battery charged too of course when you're pulling down the road your tow vehicles alternator will charge the battery also so this is the power converter and battery charger. Okay, the refrigerator is a 12 volt DC refrigerator, so it's there's nothing you need to know about it. It just makes sure you close the latch when you're traveling, so you don't dent the doors. Your fireplace 
is one, runs on 110 AC. It's a good space heater, so you just turn it on uh, right here. You see low and then high. Those are the fan speeds. So right now it's really kicking out heat on high. Uh, you can adjust the color of the crystals. Okay. You can adjust the color of the of the uh, flame. Uh, okay. It also has a timer on it, so you can set it to turn on and off when you want. It's really good space heater. It's on those days where you don't quite need the furnace, it's a great thing to run. And this is your TV remote. This is your sound bar remote here. The sound bar has uh, AM FM radio, has Bluetooth so you can stream wirelessly from your phone or your tablet. You've got a USB drive here so you could you know take all your music with you on a one USB stick or whatever however many <laughs> you need. And uh, this below it with the cap on it's an HDMI in so you go into the system with Let's say if you had a portable Blu-ray player or something, you could plug it in right there and go right into the system with it. Um, two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. Okay. And then you have a swing-out bracket for your TV. Make sure you lock it back into place. Uh, I, I can't do it with one hand, but it'll, it'll go, go right back into here. And you'll hear it lock when it locks into place, so... You just don't want it to flip around and swing around while you're traveling, that's all. Okay, the storage there. This is your thermostat here, it's very simple. You just uh, go to mode and then go through the different options, fan, furnace, off, and if I was to keep going, it'll go to air conditioning. And uh, you can set your thermostat here and then your fan options here. Always, If it gives you an option, always put the fan on auto, that seems to be the best way to go with it. Okay, so your bunks here, obviously. This couch here is a jackknife, so jackknifes into a bed. You can also drop the tabletop down onto these five cleats here and turn this into a bed. So you got no more speak or sleeping area. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Okay, the bathroom. Whenever you're traveling, you want this locked into place so it doesn't, the doors don't break. Um, it's pretty typical in the sense that it works like any other sink or shower do. A sink over here, a shower over there, obviously. Uh, this is an H or a, H, this is a GFCI plug here. So keep in mind that all the plugs in the trailer, including the one outside, is wired through a GFCI. So if you pop something outside, using it outside, you're going to reset it in here. Uh, your toilet is an RV toilet, so it sits directly over a black tank. This is the flush pedal right here. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water, you'll come in here, you put a dose of chemical in the bowl, then you'll step on the pedal and hold it long enough for about a gallon of water to go into the black tank below along with the chemical. Then you're all set. It's ready to go. If you don't do that, if you run it dry, then it's going to smell terrible. Plus, it will get clogged up, so you always want to have chemical and water in there, okay? All right. Uh, and you have a, a vent fan there also. Okay. So let me go up front here. See what else we have. Okay. So this is prepped for a second air conditioner. That's why it's a 50 amp system. So if you were to get a separate, a second air conditioner added on, it's already pre-wired, so it's very simple install, and it would fit right in here. The controls will be right on the unit. Okay? Uh, you have TV hookups here, and there's a backer plate here to hang a bracket, so you can watch it while you're laying in bed there. Um, you also have your emergency window here, which works like this. You push it all the way through, all the way through. Then you grab hold of this red tab and pull the screen out and you'd be able to uh, exit an emergency. Okay. And there's also storage underneath here. And let me just take a look. Okay, and that's good. Getting back to when I told you about cranking here. That's a wheel cover. When I told you about cranking the um, stabilizer jacks manually, and I showed you that pin with a shaft through it. Well, there's a cylinder with a slot cut in it right there. That's what fits on there. And then this is a this uh, three-quarter inch one will fit on your power tongue jack if it fails, and you can crank it using that. Okay. 
Alrighty. Sorry about my camera work, but all I can do is what I can do. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember what I said about inspecting your roof every 60 days. It should be part of your regular maintenance, making sure everything is good and tight and in good shape up there. You're just protecting yourself, and it just takes a few minutes, so make sure you do that. And right now, this is uh, plumbing-wise, it's been it's in it's in camping mode. They, the antifreeze has been purged from the system, replaced with fresh water. The water heater valves are in uh, camping position, and there's water in the water heater tank, so you're all set. Just remember, never run the water heater without water in it, okay? Thank you very much.